I think it sounds like me. I think the personality of the composers always come through, and so there is a lot of me in there. That said, um, just from an oral point of view, I, I do try to create um, sound worlds, I would say, um, or, or little worlds that belong to that piece. Um, they can be they can be a concept that. Um, is at the basis of the piece and which then gives the sound of it as well um, or it it, um, it can go further than that um, beyond sound I think very much in three dimensions so um, for me the piece is not just sound most of the time it's also on stage or in the space as soon as it there's a performance of it I think of it as a theatrical piece if you like um, so I almost see music as theatre and in that movement also plays a big role um, how the performers move what movement that's what what um, how do you say what sound that movement might add to the sounds they make anyway If I had to pick one, um, I think it would be Kagel, Mauricio Kagel. I wonder if we would have had some of the same I, like outlook on music or, or not. It, I, I, I love his way of um, working with, yeah, including the stage. So he, he has a lot of staged works, and, and um, in that way, I, I think I, I think alike in that sort of vein. Um, he also has this playful game element sometimes in his um, in his pieces. Um, I think it's somewhere where we could have also connected, and then um, it would have just been really interesting to exchange ideas. I started quite late, actually, because when I grew up here in Luxembourg, um, studying piano and, and theory at the Conservatoire, composing was not really part of the curriculum, if you like. Um, it was more the idea that you would study everything first and then maybe you can try and compose something if you really feel ready. <laughs> so I, I never really tried um, until I came to Goldsmith College uh, in London where everyone had to take composition class in the first year of, of our studies and um, and so I was a bit surprised that I was allowed to compose it this sounds really odd but it, it was somehow this was how uh, I was brought up in, in a way and so um, and then I, I tried it and then I, I didn't stop. <laughs> So I really got into it. It, it was my thing suddenly. Um, I had found what I wanted to do um, quite quickly. Um, and then I specialized in composition and I did my PhD and studied for a long time. And yeah, that's, but that's how I, that's how I started somehow. Um, so I never went through these um, really conventional tonal composing, I guess. I mean, I did do harmony exercises also in Luxembourg, but I I didn't compose when I was 13 or 16 or, or so. Um, so at Goldsmith, immediately it was anything, anything goes, the more experimental, the better. And you had to find your voice, um, not imitate anyone if possible, or it, it, it was very much that approach, um, which was really liberating.
And I do try to get away from this, what is really a theory that that um, classical music or abstract music like that, contemporary music is um, scary and only for an intellectual minority who might understand it or something. That's, I think, a terrible idea. And it should just be for everyone. And including the public... Um, in the performance sometimes, sh showing them the backstage, if you like, or the, the, they can see how it's done. Um, I think it takes away the fear a little bit of what music is. It then doesn't change the fact that you, you know, there's some magic when you hear someone play the violin who has practiced 30 years and is at the height of their playing. Um, that is still as valuable as well. Um, but people should not be afraid of that. Um, and, and yes, sometimes there, there are a few pieces where I do include non-musicians. Um, so it's quite open. I, I think music is a communication. It's an, any, any art form. It, it's the way we relate to each other. It's, it's the way we communicate with other human beings. And, and, and it's a way of learning about the world. I think that's, um, that's why I compose anyway. It, it's you explore the world and then share it with others. I think the best quality to have as a performer of my music is um, to be up for anything. It's just, you just want to find new things, explore, yeah. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's fantastic to do that with performers who are up for it. A mistake, let's say, would be to underestimate the pieces that look really easy. But some of my pieces look easy because they... Um, are written in a way that communicates what I want to happen in the easiest way. And I never believe in making anything look difficult or making it more difficult for the, just for the sake of it. Um, so some of them look like little games or little... It, there's not so much to it on the page. Um, but often performers are asked at the same time to maybe carry out an action or... or keep their bodies in a certain way or um, do something they are not necessarily so used to. And then these little things become quite difficult, actually. And it's not just a few notes, but you have to carry the whole piece. So um, it's, yeah, underestimating. It, I think, would be um, the biggest mistake. Why? Why compo Why create more music? You know, it is there, there is so much of it and arguably there's enough of it to la last everyone a lifetime and there doesn't really need to be anything more. Um, so why spend your whole life pursuing this dream, if you like? It's, I, I feel best when I compose. I, I just... I'm always very interested in new ways of thinking. And then it's about sharing, I think. I, I do like to share these exciting, it's, these exciting things I find out about the world. Um, so it's, um, it's a way of seeing the world for me, I think. 
There's also there's the question that I'm glad that you didn't ask. How is it to be a woman composer? It's the first question in all the other interviews. Um, <laughs> how is it? What is it like? Um, it's great. It's exactly like being a man composer. Um, yeah, there's still uh, somehow an, an issue about it. Um, although there shouldn't be, but there is. Um, and it, it's to do with not having enough role models. There's still not enough women composers out there. There's still not enough girls taking up composition in high school afterwards. Um, it's, yeah, there needs to be a general collective effort for that. But then once you, <laughs> once you do work within the composition realm, it's not, it's not so different <laughs> than for a man composer. And yet they never get asked, not once, how is it to be a man composer?